All right, mud lovers, how you doing? We go mud larking. That means looking for anything old and interesting on the foreshore of the River Thames. When the tide goes out, as you can see, oh, we've shown, and I don't know why I said she, but as you can see, <laughs> and we've shown. It's easy to say she, she when you're shown. Anyway, let's not miss it about. Get some luck in the mud. Go for it. I can't believe it. It's Queen Victoria. How you doing, Mel? Oh. <laughs> All the pins are out today. It's a nice big one. Sean's got a couple of friends. <laughs> I mean, usually I talk to the uh, geese, but it looks like they have a nice chat with Sean. And he's wondering what he's up to. Well, first find today is this strange little piece of brass. Huh. Looks like it could be a pendant, but I don't think it is. Interesting shape though, that would make an awesome pendant. I don't know what it is, I think it might be, it could be part of, I don't know, like a belt hanger. I think it's all complete, it's just broken off whatever it came from. Yeah, that's a good little find. Got any ideas what you think it might be? Leave in the comment below. Even if it's nothing, it'll make a wicked little pendant. Well, I've just bought a little pipe bowl, I believe it's a pipe bowl. Yeah, let's take her out. Have a muddy cocoon no, ones in this location don't tend to be very complete a lot of them are broken lots of people walking over them so some of them don't survive this looks like it might have a bit of a stem to it I'm gonna take a little bit more digging I don't want to be too harsh and so whenever you dig you need to put the uh, put back the um, spoil just so that it keeps the foreshore from being too eroded there we go ready oh there we go it's a nice one Last dropped in about 1750. Beautiful. Like I said, when you, when you dig any little holes, make sure they're all put back. Just preserve the foreshore a bit more. Sean's got his own one. That wasn't buried too deep. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. That's okay. There we go. Happy with that. Nice one. <laughs> so I just found uh, these little uh, lead studs. Yes. You found them before, Sean? Yeah, I've seen them. What are they? I think they're like part of leather work. They're quite old though, like post medieval. Yeah, um, strange little piece. Yeah, they probably would have been flatter and then. Uh, yeah, yeah, you put them through a bit of leather and look quite pretty. Well, there's another pipe. I think it's just come loose. Yay! Oh, nice one. Same as I've had before, but a slightly longer stem. Oh, it's, and it hasn't got much of a heel on as the last oh, one did, but uh, yeah, it's a slightly different design, but still the same age, 1750s. We like. Give that a little wash and put it in the pouch. Oh man, that's such a shame. Look, we found a bit of a bella mine as well, but it's not got the face on. So maybe there'll be one around here somewhere. A bit more detail on, but just look at this. Look at the patterns on this pipe. It's like a marble effect. It's beautiful. But that will all go. There's no way of really preserving that. It's a shame, isn't it? Some of them come out looking beautiful. Yeah. Now one of you guys suggested that um, I do a time lapse of how these pipes 
um, go from dark to white and it happens over the course of maybe a, probably maybe a day I don't know but I'll give it a go and see if I can get some sort of footage of that so uh, here be with me I'll see if it'll work for this demonstration I'll use a clay pipe that I found during a night lark this is a particularly nice one from the Victorian period featuring a heart and a hand when they're plucked from the mud they're almost black and you cannot wash it off however over the course of a few days the staining miraculously vanishes the oxygen or uv in the atmosphere somehow reacts and removes the staining returning it very close to the original pearly white color it once was This pipe is from the Oddfellows, a Victorian charity similar to the Freemasons. The heart and the hand represents the notion of giving with one's heart. Well, I just found the mother of all sea glass chunks. It's not obviously sea glass, but it's a, I don't know, maybe a bit of waste glass, but that's huge. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a big glistening emerald and it's got a little bit of an inclusion in there. So maybe that is a bit of waste. That's really beautiful. I might take that. It's good paperweight or something. Awesome. Well, the other day I found a bit of a bottle. Um, it was a, what was it? Uh, what's our whites? What's the other one? Baity. Baity, yeah. So the other day, so you know, recently I found that Baity bottle. Well, I'm on another lark and I'm trying to think what to do with that. And I found this a wooden handle. And I wonder if I can combine the two to make it into like a scoop. Completely random. I'm not, I'm not sure what else to do with it. I just thought immediately it would be quite a nice little scoop. So I'm going to see if this works in there. I might have to just trim down that end. Uh, somehow uh, make, it, make sure that it's uh, stabilised a little bit. Maybe put some binding around it and hold it in. But I mean, either way, that's a beautiful old handle, isn't it? Imagine that story Zach could tell. It's got a nice piece of metal on the end. So, so I think I'm going to try and use this to make a really bizarre, useless ceramic scoop. Oh yeah, that nice pipe just sitting there. Not been trodden on yet. It's been protected under that little bit of brick. Hey! Is it bead or is it a plastic? Oh, yeah. That is a bead. Cool. That's a nice one. That is a nice one. It also looks almost looks like the, a clay pipe, but no, it's yeah, definitely it's a glass. Green. It's glass, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, wow. I know a few bead fans out there, so um, I might ask a few of the other experts, like I know Flo. She likes a bead, so I'll see if I can get her opinion on that. But yeah, that'll make a lovely pendant. Maybe we'll go with the other bit I found earlier. Make another pendant, that'd be really cool. Nice. My good friend Flo tells me that this is a trade bead, dating to the 18th century. Beads were a valuable currency back then, which Europeans produced and exchanged for things like furs in North America, spices in the Far East, and gold, ivory and slaves in Africa. I wonder where the intended destination was for this beautiful glass green bead. Sean has had another pipe up, isn't it, Sean? Oh, yeah. well, that's a beautiful one. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice one. A earlier than the others. Yeah, that's sixteen nineties. Yeah, just on the verge Maybe. of seventeen hundred, I reckon. Maybe, yeah, around that sort of time. Cool in the game. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I just found a nice old ship's pulley. And there's a little pipe there first. I might get that before the tide comes in. Ah, oh, it's a stem. But yeah, I don't know if there's a maker's mark or anything on there, it'd be great if it is. 
if there's anything on it, I'll, I'll clean it up and let you know. But that's solid brass. Now that would be one hell of a pendant, wouldn't it? <laughs> Look, it's John. Hello, John. <laughs> that's quite cute, I'll take that. Must be a few Johns watching, I reckon. Hmm, it's like a bit of a bit of grape shot, very small one. Would have been bundled together, as you know. Packed and then fired from the ships. Pretty cool. Well, look, you've got two finds there. A piece of Staffordshire slipware, which I'm going to leave. Also, a nice, beautiful marble. Perfectly white, beautiful marble. I don't know, I don't seem to have found many perfectly white ones before, although it's got a little bit of a swirl in there. That's nice. I've just seen that there, look. Tiny little thing. And, uh it looks too nice to be like a piece of machinery. And there's quite a little old spot here we've got with the pipes and everything, so I'm hoping it might be an old piece of silver. I don't know, I'll have to do a little silver test and have a check it out, but I don't know, it's got a bit of rust on there, so maybe it's just a bit of junk, but if it's silver, then obviously it's meant to be an unusual little pattern. Because of top of a ring or something, wouldn't it? Imagine that all filled in with enamel or something. So I gave it a clean and it is silver, which means it's probably something quite high end. Now, can you see some initials on there? I can see MC, but what could that mean? It was probably before the days of MC Hammer, <laughs> or maybe it is MC meaning Mac, which when I remember my art college days, I remember studying the work of Charles René Mackintosh, the famous Scottish architect and designer. The work is very similar. I wonder if it's associated with him. If you think so, comment below. You seen that already? Yeah. Oh, you missed it? Yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's a, oh, yeah, it's a nice one. That is a lovely piece of Vesterveld. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's 17th... Oh, look, there's even a, an old pipe stuck inside it. That's nice, that is. It's not the bit I thought. Whoa, you know, complete that would have been a lovely big jug. Quite quite valuable when they're complete. Yeah, I like that. Definitely a keeper. Mine. So that's really cool. Maybe it's maybe it's eroding out, you know, so I think maybe we'll take that and uh collect the rest of it. Yeah, later. Maybe, maybe maybe the rest of it might be coming out another time. Yeah. Right guys, so I've just been walking past this little spot and uh, I saw something, I didn't know what it was, but now, actually do you know what, I can't believe it, there's two, there's two next to each other, I can't believe this, this has never happened to me in my life, can you see what I'm looking at Sean? I'm not sure where your eyes are, <laughs> just there, just there, can you see it Sean? Uh -huh. Well look, the general area oh, right, is there, there. Right, okay. yeah, I mean I'm sure everyone can see it at home, but that's because I'm looking straight at it, I can't, oh no, do you know what, it's the imprint, it's the imprint yeah. of the of the coin. It's yeah. been flipped that up. Where, of course it is. There it is. That's already been flipped over. Yeah. That, so that was. I thought there was two coins, but yeah, it's been yeah, flipped yeah. over. Look at that impression. That Georgian. It is. Georgian Look at that first. impression of the mask. Oh man, that's, that's a really beauty. Cool. Let me get a bit wet and you can see the detail even better. Oh wow, that's in lovely condition. Oh right? man, look at that. Do you know what? I thought it was two coins. That, that can't be. Yeah, that, can, that can't <laughs> be. But look at that. Look at the date on there. Seventeen fifty. That's Christmas Perfect. the day it was made. Bang little, on with the um, a lot of the bits coming off. Yeah. Right? Little dump issue half penny. We must have knocked that, you know. Yeah. Walking across here. Do you know what? I picked that bit of pottery up. Ah, oh, so you probably was looking I, at that. I may have flipped it. I don't know though. It's there, and the pottery was here. Yeah, look, so I don't think I did. No, I think it, I think it may have just been caught Although with heel or someone. Piece, look, yeah, that's remarkably close. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just glad we saved it because yeah, uh, well it could have been washed away in the next tide. So, whoa, beautiful little Georgian halfpenny. That's in cracking condition. Yeah, lovely job, lovely. Wicked, woohoo! <laughs> Same sort of ages as the pipe driving around here.
pottery, this is the place for you. All over the show. Over the show. There we go, look, Cox. I know we are, but what are you? Merchant, something merchant, Compton Street. Should be able to work out who that is. Not sure if it's a uh, plate. Nice. I do enjoy researching random shards, and after some digging, boom boom, I saw this ad from a newspaper from 1909 showing Mr. Frank E. Cox, who was the son of Mr. A. Cox, late of Old Compton Street. They traded in cut glass and china and also fitted out bars. They promised cheapness and quality with a prompt delivery. I say, bravo. Oh, look at that. It's like a river worn stopper you got there. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a little chess piece. Cool. Nice. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, nice. that could be a pretty cool pendant, couldn't it? Yeah. If it was to mount in a bit of silver or something. I'm just thinking pendants today for some reason. Yeah, sweet. It would have been a nice little cut glass on top, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, a nice and river worn. Yeah. Well, Sean's found something and the tide's about to come in. We might get a little bit of a wake. He's going to save it. What you got? Nice. It's like a nice little Victorian pork pie. Oh, it's lost its little top. That's repairable. Yeah, it's nice. It's displayed. Oh, look, do you know what? You can see the fingerprints. You know when they picked it up, the wet slip? Oh, yeah. Right. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, cool. They grabbed yep. it. Yeah, they grabbed yeah, it around yeah. the side so as they were taking it onto the, into the kiln or something. Yeah, a little bit of a slide on the finger yeah. there. Yeah, that's pretty and, cool. Uh, yeah, you've got the actual sort of almost yeah. whole. That's pretty mad, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. Fingerprints of the person that made it. When that dries out, you might see it better. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I like that. Yeah, I'd take that. If you don't want it, I'll have it. <laughs> well, just got a handful of lovely little things. Nice few copper nails there, a few pins, and what looks like it might be a very knackered trader's token, TC. I read somewhere that TC could stand for town coin, so it might not be a, a single maker, but it might be just stand for as town coin. And this, this little beauty, could very well be a trader's token. Uh, it's quite worn, but I think I can see a little bit of detail there. So stick around for the clean up. I'll give that a little fizz, maybe some lemon juice or something else, and uh, see if we can get any detail on that. It's either that or a back of a button. So look, we're also finding a few garnets today, which is a nice surprise. And these ones are a bit bigger and rougher. And there's also there's one there. I'll put that there. And there's also one, I believe, just under that stone there. Uh, maybe not, but <laughs> there's a few knocking around. Yeah, that's like a nice piece of flint as well, doesn't it? I might see what Sean thinks of that. He might say it's worked, he might say it's uh, natural. Sean, so you like to, you like your work flint, don't you? I like a little bit of flint. Can you tell me if that's anything good? I can tell you that it's absolutely natural. Oh, is it? <laughs> absolutely natural, mate. Yeah, sorry. It's not struck. It's just a... a Frost, frost um, fracture. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm still learning, so. Uh, oh, that's. You just found. Another piece. Talking of bits and bobs. You just uh, found the other half of my jug. There you go. See that oh. fits. Oh, it's over in my other bag. Oh, is it? Yeah, we'll, we'll match it up later. Yeah. yeah oh, is, is that for me, or do you want half? Yeah, of course. Of it? Oh, all right, no, thank you. you. Can you find the rest of it for me as well? Yeah, please? I'll just get. I'll just get it. Lovely. <laughs> well, everywhere we go, everywhere we go, we find a musket ball. Nearly everywhere we go, but. <laughs> got one today. Well, I've got a big coin here. You see it, Sean? Yes. Oh, you can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for a Vicky, I'll go very worn Vicky penny. What do you reckon? Yeah. Oh, no. Or is it a button? Oh. Oh. No, it's not. Oh, it's a. Is it Georgie? Georgie third? Yeah, but it's. Oh, it's... No, it's got that. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just coughing out disbelief. Looks like it's been misprinted or something's gone on there, isn't it? Look at the look at the bust on that. It's odd, isn't it? Why it's very strange. Been... Wow, that is incredible. Any ideas off the face of it? No, I've 
It might be that it's a fake, like um, yeah, it could be. an or invasion token. Oh, do you know what? It looks like it's really badly misprinted. Really, like it looks like it's got the top of the geo there. It's like a double strike. A yeah, maybe it bounced out the uh, like you said, bounced out the mint. And I think I can see Britannia there on that side. Oh, that's very confusing. Oh, wicked though, isn't it? Don't usually find ones this odd. The oddest coin. Peculiaria. Well, as you can tell, this wonderful uh, coin could probably do with a little bit of a clean, purely because it's got a bit of a rough patch on that side. So hopefully that isn't anything too degrading and we can get it off, or at least get it down to the base metal. Um, let's give it a go. After I clean the coin using my electrolysis kit, you can clearly see that both sides have been struck twice, and deliberately so. During the reign of George III, which this coin was made in the late 1700s, forgeries in coins was rife. To get around the counterfeiting laws, con men would create regal looking coins, often with words such as God save the king or George rules and made to look worn so that people didn't notice. And remember, illiteracy was common back then, so forgeries were easily passed around. Also, if caught, they could argue they were only making tokens and not copying the real thing. I found a couple before with different legends on, but none quite like this that has been misstruck. It's a very rare thing and one that I'll record with the Museum of London. Once it's recorded on the pass scheme, a record will be made and it'll be given back to me. Oh, look at him! <coughs> oh, I haven't spoken in a few minutes, my voice has gone. So yeah, look at this beautiful little horse! Oh wow, that size even better! Oh, isn't he a stunner? Do you know what? I found a couple of little ones earlier, but I didn't show you. But now I've got a trio of horses. Very good. Giddy up. This is sweet, isn't he? Really lovely little horse head, that. Got a Celtic vibe to it, that. <laughs> Sean's got his top off, everyone. Yeah, I've got a... Um, oh, you've got a nice little bit of stone there. Possible cut down. Yeah. yeah. That's nice, isn't it, there? Yeah, it's got Maker's Mark on there. What, not one that I really recognise. Oh, no, it's got a date the on there, isn't it? 1869 it's got on there as a patent. Oh, born and Son, it is. Oh, it is Born, yeah. Yeah, Born and Son, but I don't, yeah, I don't know if I've, maybe I've found they were Denby. Yeah. Because they became Denby, didn't they? That's nice, I like how all the mud is stuck in the lettering yeah, to show it up a bit. Yeah, it shows up there, Do you want me to cut that down for you? If you wouldn't mind, mate, that'd be Of course really I would. Yeah, no, not a problem. Better than I am. <laughs> yeah, no problem, mate, I'll cut it down for you. I'll take your horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's quite interesting. I've just given it a little wash already because uh, I was hoping it might be a bit of opal, but as you guys and Sean has t told me again, it's probably opaline, which is a man made version, but still might clean up if I can do something with it. I haven't really got the polishing tools. Maybe I'll give it to Wendy and she can make something out of it. She'll be able to tell me if it's, if it's any good or not. It might just crack and fall apart, but yeah, let's ping off to Wendy and see if she can do something with it. Talking of my friend Wendy, the jeweller, don't forget to enter the competition to be in with a chance to win one of these two handmade silver and gold rings using the gold that I found on a recent mudlark. For more details, click the thumbnail at the end of this video to see what you have to do to enter. I'll also include this upcycle necklace, which I made using the piece I found earlier. So now there's three prizes, and here's how I made it. So it took me a little while to work out what this actually was. Uh, if you turn it on its side, can you see that? Can you work it out? It is in fact an escutcheon plate, probably from a box or something like that. And the key, a little smaller than this one, would have gone in there. Anyway, it'll make a lovely little pendant. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to clean the bottom half, brass, because it's got a bit of um, crud on there anyway, but let it fade into the natural patina of the brown. So. Yeah, something a bit different and a bit unusual. So uh, yeah, all we need to now is put it in to electrolysis and get the first bit of it going.
I don't find these very often. It's a bit of purple glass. I don't know if they used to make them using a uh, purple, but pretty nice, isn't it? So thin. Oh, looks like we have a little bit of leather press. M. M for mud. So me and Shauno are in the uh, public house having a little uh, peruse at our finds. Yeah, look, what's better than uh, sitting in a pub outside looking at your finds after? I found a few pins, <laughs> just a few. Actually, Sean threw through this at me while we are looking at it. He, he showed me what a real flake looks like. And we went out recently, obviously, if you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. And we found some gorgeous pieces of flint there. I won't spoil it for you. You have to go and check out the video. And uh, so, yeah, I'll, uh, little odds and sods. Oh, there's my horses. I found uh, three horses, got a little leg. Got almost a full cavalry of broken uh, soldiers and legs, etc. I think that might be something else. I don't know about that one. And obviously, I've got a big horse's head as well. Somewhere. Ah, and here it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a majestic beast, isn't it? Um, and some buttons and bits and bobs, bit of purple glass. I found this as well, right? Um, I think it's just modern, but it's got a really nice pattern on it, so I might have a go to turn that into a ring. Um, just hammering it down. So, uh, yeah, stick around for that if I manage that. Um, and I've got I picked up a load of copper nails today, so I'm thinking about making a copper ring out of these as well, but whether I'll ever get around to it or not, I don't know. Um, but I've had just given it a go. Oh, that, that can go with that. that was, that's a little TC medieval token. But, you know, this beautiful uh, Georgian coin is uh, my find of the day um, just look at that condition George II but as interesting as that is I think this could be even more interesting and I'm not even sure if I prefer this one or not but it looks like it's a misprinted George III or maybe George II it might be a really rough idea of a forgery got a bit of crud there I have to clean off and there's a bit of Britannia so maybe if someone was trying out a bit of forgery and thought oh, this ain't any good, throw it back. Um, maybe it will uh, reveal a little bit more when I clean it. Stick around for that. And we have the usual beautiful clay pipes, dating from about 1600 up to 1750. Lovely chunk of sea glass. And look, we had these earlier. And uh, it is the same animal, but it doesn't quite match up. But that would have been a lovely tankard. Would you like to hold that up like it, like it would be? How you would drink it, look, so that, that side like that. Yeah, put, yeah, look at that. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Fill yeah. it up. Nice big, yeah, big, big drinking tankard. 18th century uh, Westerveld from Germany. What a fantastic Westerveld. Yeah, Westerveld. And I think I found this as well. This might be in the same sort of uh, era. I don't know, and this is a plate. And uh, yeah, so obviously, uh, nice bit of Bellamine base there. If we ever find the full one, we've got the base for it. If we ever yeah. find, yeah, if we ever find the rest of it, <clears throat> we've got the base for it. Wicked man, so uh, what, what do you reckon your favourite find of the day is? Um, I'm not sure, probably one of the pipes, I guess. I think um, um, you're going to cut that down for me, which I quite like. The I stoneware, am. maker's mark on there. And uh, yeah, I've got a few little bits, some nice garnets, some nice pins. I've got a little pistol ball. Brilliant. Um, in my little smalls. And you got a bead? I got a bead, yeah. Maybe a couple of beads actually. Um, I say a couple of garnets, some, pin, um, some pins, and a pistol ball. Yeah, there's another little bead. Oh, yeah. Uh, some garnets, there's a little yellow bead. Oh, the little cone, little Tudor. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a star cone. find, that is. Yeah, that's really that's nice. quite nice. Um, little lead, um, possibly a bag seal or something. Um, yeah, and some little small, some pins. I do love finding pins, and, and especially in little pistol balls. Yeah. That's another bead, we think, but I'm not sure if it's going, whether the hole doesn't go, seem to go all the way through. No, I wonder why that would be. So, yeah, misprint, or miss egg, or I'm not sure, little lead leg or something. Looks like a creature's leg or something. <laughs> yeah, 
Cool though. Yeah, some nice garnets. Thanks yeah, so the, I want you to make something out of a garnet for me. Yeah, I will. Promise? I will. Promise, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> So here's that bottle that I found a few uh, a few months ago. Well, something's like it's just washed up recently. Uh, look at that. Oh, look at that nice baity impression. A slightly earlier one, I think, or maybe yeah. Not usual, not the usual type of beer bottles that we're used to, or lemonade, baity lemonade or mineral water. So oh, it's a shame it's not there. Got the best bit on it though. I wonder if I can upcycle that into something. Tobias reckons I can. So. Maybe there's a challenge there. Oh, I was thinking about that one. What can I do to that? Make a little spade out of it. It's <laughs> a scoop. <laughs> Don't know. Lovely embossed baity um, writing on there, and really cool colours. That lovely stoneware, earthenware style. And they got this by throwing salt into the kiln. Very interesting how they managed to get this speckled effect. But very cool and it, it worked perfectly as a scoop. So here's the really cool old handle. Very smooth and worn. There goes the cat. And uh, yeah, so now I'm just gonna fill it in with a bit of PVA glue just to help um, stop it splitting any further and put it in the old vise here and then we'll give it a nice sand. Well, as you can see, my bottle won't quite fit on there. And I think if I take too much off, it might become so thin, it won't hold it. So, so I've just got this bit of a uh, wood from the garden and I'm gonna turn it and put it in the hole to secure it up. And interestingly, this is, goes hollow all the way inside there. Don't know why it's made like that. But anyway. We just need to reinforce that bit just so it's got a bit more stability. Glue it in, then we can take a bit more off here. That's my thinking. Well, I haven't used my wood lathe in a long time and I forgot how rewarding it is. And recently I found a big old lump of mahogany which is drying out nicely and I plan to turn that as well. So please subscribe and tap the notification bell so you don't miss that and my future mud ventures.
beautiful there you go tap that in give it a glue Instead of filling and painting the crack, I decided to follow the ancient Japanese art of kintsugi, also known as golden joinery. Traditionally used on broken pottery, this technique treats breakages and repairs as part of the history of the object, rather than something to disguise. So why not celebrate our flaws and imperfections by filling it with gold leaf? <laughs> Thanks for watching my lovers and be sure to check out this video in order to enter the gold ring giveaway and to watch another epic mudlark. <laughs> I'll see you on the next mudventure. <laughs>